Now we can look at the pH scale. And the pH scale is really, pH is just kind of a measure of how acidic or basic your solution is going to be. And it's based off of the hydronium concentration. So if you know what the hydronium ion concentration is, you can figure out what the pH is. If you're given, if you know the pH, you can figure out the hydronium concentration. This is kind of how you undo this log. If you're new to logs, don't worry. It's just a button in your calculator. Make sure you're using the LOG instead of the LN. They're totally different. So you want to make sure you're using the right one. And uh, to undo that, you're in 10 raised to the negative pH. And so the negative is just because we have a negative log there. So in pure water, hydronium equals hydroxide. And in this problem above here, we, we figured out that that's the concentration of hydroxide or hydronium ions is 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So if you had pure water, this is neutral pH. So I would, I would find that pH by just saying um, pH is equal to negative log of the hydronium. So if it was 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. When you work that out in your calculator, you'd see, let's see it disappear. No, I'd see that it is 7.00, 7.00. So I use two sig figs here. So when you're looking at, uh, when you're doing logs, and you're looking at pH in particular, the there are two significant figures in this number, right? In the molar concentration, 1.0, and that zero is significant because there's a decimal point present. Um, so when you're doing your pH, pH, since it's a log scale, the, the numbers after the decimal place are the significant figures. That first one just kind of tells you what power of 10 you had. These last two are the ones that are significant. So just to be consistent, I'm, I'm going to usually give you two sig figs here. So you should put two um, decimal places on your pH. Now the pH scale, low pHs are acidic. So over here on this side, so this is the pH scale. Look at this one here. Um, so on the top you have things that are acidic, right, increasing in acid strength, and then on the bottom you have things that are basic, and so things that are acidic, stomach acid, lemon juice, um, Coca-Cola, vinegar, and then things that are basic are things like bleach and ammonia, you can see borax is on there, so if you make slime, <laughs> that's a little bit basic, it's actually a laundry detergent, uh, or laundry booster. Um, so let's see, so acids are anything that's less than 7, bases are things that, are, that have a pH that are greater than 7. Um, and we're going to look at these equations. So pH plus pOH gives you a, a number of 14. So if you know what the pH is, you can figure out the pOH. So what's, what do we mean by pOH and um, pH? Hydronium times hydroxide is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So we're going to use that equation over and over again. So, so far, if you know hydronium, you can get to hydroxide. If you know hydronium, you can get to pH. So we have a couple different relationships here. Um, yep, so let's look at, let's, let's practice using this equation first. So pH, uh, what is the pH of the following solution? So if you want to pause the video, calculate your pHs, go for that. Um, pH is just negative log of the hydronium concentration. So as long as you have that hydronium concentration times into negative four, you can figure that out. So pause it, put it in your calculator. You really should try to put this in your calculator to make sure that you, you get it right. Um, I got 3.42, and since I had two sig figs here, I'm going to put two decimal places over here. So that's my final answer. Um, now in this next problem, they give us hydroxide instead of hydronium. So we have to find the, hydro the hydronium concentration. So we remember that hydronium, whoa, hydronium times hydroxide uh, is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So all I have to do is take 1 times 10 to the negative. To find hydronium, it's just 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6. So this is a two-part problem. The first part is to figure out what the hydronium concentration is, which is 5.3 times 10 to the negative 9. And now you can find the pH of that. So pH is just negative log of the 5.3 times 10 to the negative 9. And that should give you 8.28. 8.28. And so you look at that answer and you say, OK, that's, that's basic. Yeah, because it's a window cleaning solution. And up here you had lemon juice. And it's less than 7, so that's acidic, right? So it's always good to look at your answers and see if they make any sense. 
So other notations that we have, um, other p scales, so p of, of h, so ph is negative log of the h, poh is negative log of the oh, pka, negative log of the ka, or, sorry, kw, pka, negative log of ka, pkb, negative log of kb. So p anything is always negative log of the anything. And then to undo that log base 10, you have 10 to the negative ph is hydronium, 10 to the negative poh is hydroxide. Uh, and so these four are the ones that we're going to use a lot in the next couple sections. Um, and so on the exam review sheet, I want to show you one um, thing that's really going to help us out here. So if you know hydronium, you can get to pH because um, pH is this negative log of hydronium. Or if you know pH, 10 to the negative pH will give you hydronium. So there's a clear relationship between hydronium and pH. Same thing with pOH and hydroxide. So if you know hydroxide, then negative log of the hydroxide gives you the pOH concentration, or 10 to the negative pOH gives you hydroxide. So these two things are, are very similar. pH plus pOH is 14, and we already saw this one too. So Kw, so 1 times the negative 14 is hydronium times hydroxide. So if you know hydronium, you can get to hydroxide using this equation. If you know hydronium, you can get to pH using this equation. If you know pH, you can get to pOH using this equation. Um, if you know POH and get to pH using that equation, and you can go between these two as well. So if you know one of these things, you can figure out all three of them just using this table. And again, this is on your exam uh, review sheet. So I'm going to derive one of these equations for you really quickly. Really quickly. Um, we had hydronium. Oops. There we go, hydronium times hydroxide is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. If I take the negative log of both sides of all this and I use some log rules, I get negative log of hydronium plus the negative log of hydroxide. So that's a log rule. If you didn't take pre-calc, don't worry about it. Negative log of 1 times the negative 14 just gives me 14. So this right here is pH, and this right here is uh, pOH equals 14. So that's where we got that equation from. So now we can use all those equations to help us uh, answer this following, this, this last question here. The solution is formed by dissolving an antacid tablet. has a pH of, of 9.18. Find the hydroxide concentration. So if we go over here, there uh, we're starting with a pH. Right? And we want to get to the hydroxide concentration. So there's two pathways we can take. We can say we can find the pOH first. We can do 14 minus the pH gives us a pOH and then convert from pOH to hydroxide. Or you can do the uh, go the other way. You can go from pH to hydronium, then hydronium to hydroxide. Either one will get you the exact same answer. So you're going to find a method that, that works best for you. I'm going to use the bottom pathway. Here we go. So I'm going to say, I'm going to find my pOH first. So I say pOH, pOH is 14 minus 9.18. So when I work that out, I get 4.82. And then to find hydroxide, hydroxide is 10 to the negative pOH. So I have 10 to the negative 4.82. So take some time and work that out in your under calculator. So I get 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. That is my hydroxide concentration. And that's what they were looking for. So two-step problem. Um, I, I did the bottom path of that chart. I did uh, pH to pOH and then pOH to hydroxide. Um, so there's lots, lots of different ways to measure pH. You can use litmus paper. You may have seen that before. It's, uh, it's red or blue. Depending on what the pH is, it'll, it'll turn colors. Um, you can use different indicators. Uh, you can use universal indicator paper, which has a whole bunch of these indicators kind of in it already, and it's just like a little strip, a strip of paper. We're going to use phenolphthalein in, um, in when we do our titrations. So in, in the next chapter, you can see that uh, basically what an indicator is, is it just changes colors depending on if it's an acid or base, depending on the pH. And so here's methyl red, and depending on what kind of um, 
pH range you're looking in, you'll use a different indicator. And so the one that we're going to really look at is phenolphthalein. And you're looking for this color when you're doing the titration. If you get to this, this point, you've gone too far. Uh, so we're going to try to stop it at this point. If you can't see the color difference between here and here, like my husband cannot tell the difference between those subtle color changes, um, that's okay. Just make sure one of your lab partners can. This is the one that we're looking for. Another thing you can do is you can look at, um, you can use a pH meter. So our pH meters are basically our lab quest units with an extra pH probe. And then it'll just read the pH right on the lab quest unit. So it looks a little bit more up to date than, uh, than the one from the book.